Hey folks, it's Andrew Kilpatrick here and I want to show you some Eurorack modules and give you a basic uh, demo about how modular synthesizers work. So for people who have heard of them, maybe haven't used them before, or are just interested in some of the basics, uh, I hope to cover some, some ideas here. Um, so basically I build modular synthesizers. I've got two different formats that I do now. I've, I support the Eurorack format with these modules. These two top rows of this system have modules that I've made commercially and sold through lots of great dealers all over the world. And then this row here and one down here are some DIY modules that I made a couple summers ago um, because I was interested in sort of filling up my system with stuff that uh, that I didn't want to do as a, for a full commercial module because making stuff for sale and um, going through the whole production process is really, really expensive and time consuming. And there's lots of other good modules on the market. I just decided I wanted to make my own. Uh, so I built these and these ones are, are branded Dintree, which is just a made up name that I use for my, some of my hobby projects. You can build these yourself. Their plans and, and stuff are freely available. Um, and then down here I have some modules. A few of these I, I tra uh, traded with uh, Maleko, uh, uh, Josh, who's a really cool guy. Um, and I also, this, this one here is the 3000 VCO. Pretty simple VCO, which I bought um, a couple of years ago. So this is my Eurorack system. I will probably make it bigger someday, but I'm sort of out of room in my studio here so far. Um, so I've got basically four rows um, and I'll basically just go through what the modules are and uh, what they are used for because that's, um, if you're getting into modular synthesizers you've probably seen lots of sort of like uh, yummy shots in uh, various forums of people's huge systems and all sorts of cables everywhere and it looks very uh, enticing and daunting um, but uh, basically everything boils down to more or less one of two kinds of signals that are connecting between things basically you're building up synthesizers from parts in a if you buy a keyboard with a synthesizer inside it or if you use like a VST plugin that's a complete synth you basically get all those parts sort of pre-wired generally um, but a modular lets you do things differently uh, one main advantage of a modular synthesizer is that it lets you build uh, sounds or make sounds without requiring a keyboard. Most VSTs and most uh, hardware uh, keyboard-based synths sort of rely on the fact that you're pressing keys down all the time when you want to make sound. And that's maybe good if you're a good keyboard player, which I'm not, and I know a lot of other electronic music, music people aren't. Um, but if you just want to experiment with sound and you want to create rhythms and, and different kinds of, uh, of soundscapes or whatever kind of thing you're into, then just having the building blocks accessible that you can just use right away is, is really fun. So if I turn this on, you'll hear it's making a little pattern and you can see there's a ball bouncing around on the screen here. If I adjust my envelope generator, I can get the notes to sound different, <clears throat> but and I can also adjust how long the notes are. So basically what I have going on here is this has its own internal clock. It's generating pulses. This is the beat here. It makes 16th notes by default. Um, so this adjusts the speed. The ball bounces around on the screen. And when the ball hits uh, a dot that's lit up, it plays the note. And the note that it plays is actually behind. You can't see it, but you can sort of envision it that there are eight notes of a scale on every row. And the number of uh, octaves is settable between two and four. Uh, and the scale type is settable between major and sort of, sort of a minor with a lowered uh, seventh and a lowered third. Um, and then you can change the direction. So if I set this to something really simple, this is just going to play... I'll turn the delay down so it's a little easier to hear. So this is just playing <clears throat> some scales. 
This sets the offset. And this sets the length of the pattern, or the motion. So here. That'll just play a scale. But now, if I just turn this, now I get a different pattern because I've turned off some of the notes. If I switch the tonality, now it sounds sort of minor. Now if I change the motion, now it's going down. So that sounds pretty cool. I've got it eight notes repeating. When you touch these, they show you a preview of like how long it will be, and then the, the lights go away. If I change this, so we have the same motion, but changing the pattern changes which notes play, essentially. Now we can go backwards. forwards. So that's pretty fun. It's a really great way that you don't have to like have any input like a keyboard or anything like that. You get stuff happening. So if I'm running this, I can give you an idea of like basically what's happening with the signals that are coming out of here. And I'll change this to make it do something different. doing a zigzag pattern or something. So basically, this there's two outputs from here. That's all that's happening from the control side of things. This is putting out a voltage, which is rel related to the pitch that the pattern generator wants to play. This is a volt per octaves, which means that in the center, it's kind of mid-range in the tuning of, of, the, of the system. And if it goes between sort of about negative five and plus five volts, or negative four and plus four would be eight octaves, which is generally the range you can get on here. So every volt increase is double the frequency is what, what you want. Uh, this just makes the voltage, goes into the oscillator. The oscillator is using the CV in, which is calibrated for one volt per octave internally. And it's making pitches. It's actually making a pulse with modulation sound, which you can hear. The PWM signal is coming from this side. That's making this, here I can lengthen the notes and you'll hear. So if I turn up the PWM depth, you can hear that warbling. That's done internally by turning up this, this pot. And if I change the speed, now I can get more um, wider modulation or faster modulation. This does deeper modulation. slow PWM with a more depth sounds pretty deep. So then, the output of here, which is this sound, uh, is basically always on all the time. The oscillator will just make the sounds continuously. So if I actually unplug this, put it into another channel on my mixer, you'll be able to hear. This is just playing all the time. If I turn this off, it's just continually making sound. So you need more circuitry to actually turn the notes on and off. So what I had it going into here is going into a, um, a filter. This is the Borg filter, which is a really good filter from uh, Maleco. And um, that's making it so you can shape the sound, change how, how it sounds, the high frequency content. So the output of there then goes into the VCA, which is a voltage controlled amplifier. That lets a voltage, control voltage, turn up and down the volume. So the filtered sound goes into the VCA. Then from the VCA goes into the mixer, which is basically the sound that you're hearing. I also have effects over here, adding a bit of reverb. That's just taking a tap off the signal going into the mixer from the uh, VCA and putting it through a reverb circuit. So the 
The other output from the pattern generator, the gate out, is actually going on and off every time the note is played. Like that. Um, I can change the length of that gate by adjusting this. So this is just making little short pulses. And then that signal, which is just a square wave signal, is going into the envelope generator. If I put that signal directly into the VCA, you would hear a completely different thing. You would hear basically... No. I need to just rearrange something here. I was also using the envelope to change the filter frequency, but if I do this, I should hear it the same way. So that's quite abrupt, it's just on and off. And you don't even need to use the envelope generator if this is the kind of sound that you want. But if you use the envelope generator, you get to see, you get to have it so that the sound fades up and down uh, slowly or quickly or whatever you want. So if you turn these up, You can shape the sound to smoothly start and stop the notes in response to a what otherwise abrupt starting and stopping of the gate. And then that's basically it. You've got a complete synthesizer being driven by this source of control signals. And that's basically it. So I'll go through the modules in more detail in another video, but this is a basic patch. This is some basic modules, I'm not even using very many of them, only a couple. And you're getting sound and able to control a lot of different parameters of the sound. You can change the waveform. This is a sine wave, triangle wave, ramp wave. All kinds of possibilities, the sky's the limit really. Anyway, that's it for this video. See you soon.